Good morning everybody, it's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Code of Princess. In the last episode, we got three new party members to join our crusade. Suke Kage, Master T, and Sister Helga are all joining our forces in hopes of destroying the Empyrean Stone. Because if we destroy the stone, then there'll be no more monsters, but also no more magic. Though I think in this circumstance, it's more well, our, it's more well worth our time to destroy all monsters. So we're going to go into the next mission now that we have our objective in mind. And we're going to play as Sister Helga for the first time. Now, I don't have any new uh, setups um, from the last episode like I said I was going to do because I never know how to uh, stay true to what I was talking about in previous episodes. And my god, like just the sprites on here look really singing good. I don't know why, I just, I'm taking the time to take it all in. And Zozo's especially looks really cool, just the details on it and everything, but whatever. Um, I don't know, I would like to have an episode later on where I get into competitive play, but for right now, I think I just want to go about it in whatever weapons and items I feel are best, and of course, it's not really going to be a good setup, but I kind of want to deal with my failures because it'll allow me more time for commentary and all that jazz, so we're just going to go about it the way that I want to do it and the way I know how, and later on, we'll have a bonus video where we um, go over competitive play, and I think that'll be more suited when going into fancy pantsy items, but for the main story, I think we're good with just whatever seems best suited for us right here and now. So we're just going to go with Sister Helga and get things started. And ZOMG, no opening cutscene, this is already the worst at chapter ever, no. Okay, so Sister Helga is really interesting in which she kind of, you kind of get to choose what she has, and what I mean by that is that uh, she has this special attack, I remember, oh, okay, hello. <laughs> she has this special attack, I think it's down down A, or down down B or something. Down down B, I uh, know it's not, but there's a certain special attack that lets her trade her stats around, like you could trade all, switch all of her MP out and give her a full heal. It's kind of interesting, so you can deal out a lot of physical damage and then uh, after taking a couple of hits herself, then you get to switch over to uh, regular attacks, but she's also just like very stinking powerful. She does like a lot of stinking damage and a lot of spiking damage as you can see. So she's kind of like Allegro in that sense, kind of like Solange in which she does a lot of physical damage, which is cool, but again, it's weird that she doesn't like have a full-on run, she just does that like little dash thing. Uh, she can't fly around as far as I'm aware. Uh, nope, so she doesn't have that going for her. So yeah, it's kind of interesting having to experience these characters for the first time. I wish they were fully fleshed out in this version, but it doesn't seem like they are though. Some people make them work. Like I said before, Suke Kage is considered to be the best character in the game. Uh, let's go over here and hit this guy. Just bash this thing to smithereens if we can. Uh, just do that. I want to see, I wish I had the uh, combo sheet on my screen. Unfortunately, I can only show it to you in editing. Just go over here and just get rid of this guy who's just derping around over here. He's got such weird eyes. Just gonna keep on getting rid of him. See if I can do something stronger. There we go. Uh, not liking her damage output all that much right now. She doesn't seem all that powerful. Like, maybe that's just my fault for not uh, getting the right combos in. It probably is. It's usually the case. In Whoa, I didn't know they have self-destruct ability. Whoa, okay. Let's feel enemies. We're gonna keep on going. Like she just has that weird little lunch thing. We could just walk normally, I guess, but that's no fun. I don't want to walk. Walking's for suckers, and I ain't no sucker, says the guy who continues to walk like a sucker. Speaking of suckers, we got some hornets here. They're going to suck the life out of us if we don't do something about it. Uh, let's go over here, do the laser. I'm a fire in my lasers. And jeez, she does have like a little jumping thing like Master T does. She just floats around everywhere. Uh, if we can walk onto one of these dudes, that would be nice. As you do that, get in there. Come on, get me some damage output. So, um, in terms of like stuff I was doing before, I was able to record this let's play. There were a lot of other let's plays that I was trying to record uh, beforehand, in, just in advance, because I can actually talk about this now. Since I revealed that I'm halfway done with my let's playing journey, I can finally talk about like my Alpine schedule and like things that I have planned out and all that jazz. So. From here on out, I try to. I want to try and have only 10 Let's Plays done every year, and I know that sounds like kind of funny to say only 10 Let's Plays a year, considering like only uh, other people do like don't reach that number all, all that often. But whatever, it's uh, something that I just want to set out to do, and um, I've gotten a majority of them already fully recorded, but none of them have been edited. Code of Princess was not going to be the first LP of Year 7, it was really going to be some other game, but I was not prepared to 
uh, release that one, so I decided to switch to Code of Princess since I thought I would be ready for that one. But of course, the one thing I forget on my when I uh, went on a trip was my 3DS capture card, so I wasn't able to record. And I asked uh, my friends if they could go to where my, I was in California and uh, get my stinging capture card. I told them exactly where it was, and they said it wasn't there. I was like, oh great, I probably packed it away somewhere but didn't actually put it in a suitcase. So I was spending the entire trip worried that like it was lost somewhere, maybe it got lost in the airport, I had no idea. It was just really annoying. And then as soon as I get back, I go where I told them that the 3DS capture card was, and it was literally in the exact same location, but they just didn't see it or something, or they didn't bother checking, and they just pretended that they checked. I don't know what they were expecting me to uh, say when I got back and it was right in the stinking spot. But whatever, here we are now. I was hoping that this LP would be fully recorded like long, long ago, and we wouldn't have had such a long delay with uploads and everything. I apologize for that. Year 7 is going to be all about just like cleaning things up. Year 6 was, had a lot of problems to it and uh, whatnot, but hopefully we'll get it all sorted out in time to come. It's a mini boss! Get him! I am Allegro, and what is the fourth wall? Why, hello, hello! Hey, the raccoon's back. Anyone else having a rough time with this humidity? And my dear, I am a cat, not a raccoon. Hello! Jackal hug! Get your goon off me! Oh, Mr. Snuggles can talk. Can I keep him? They really breed him big wherever you're from. Now stay back. I think you know why I'm here. Well, you see, we're on a mission to save the entire world. So maybe we could forget about my debt? <laughs> Did I hear you right? Did you just say, forget about your debt? Allie, talk to him! Hey, Fuzzball, are you gonna keep stalking us until he pays you back? Like if she switches into like a Brooklyn accent just for that? Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not stalking anyone. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing some bird watching. <laughs> That's all. Our paths crossed purely by coincidence. But yes, expect to see a lot of me. The boy will repay his debt. Yeah, about that. What if I die before I can pay you back? You know what they say, the beautiful die young. What? See, even though I am a level 99 sage, I do have a pretty low armor class. Wait, I do have a low armor class. I really am gonna die. When did you reach level 99? And who cares? We need to keep going. Look at it, Helga. Let's not be hasty. I can't have my investments dying on me. That's bad business. What's your solution? I've restocked some very fine army arm <clears throat> armaments. I'll even offer you my special hero discount. Buy 2,000, get one free. You can't beat that. Sounds just like the trade-in deals at GameStop. Say what you want, but I think he's really warming up to me. Oh, I love bargain shopping. What a nice kitty. I still say he's a raccoon. And the hits just keep on coming. I like how even in cutscenes when characters are running, like Helga and Tsukikage, they couldn't even run properly. They just kept hopping. It looks so sick and weird. So everyone gets a buttload of level ups. I'm not going to read off every single one anymore because that would be very annoying. And a new character has been unlocked. Marco Neko is the final main character of story mode. In the 3DS version, you had to complete a certain mission in bonus mode to unlock him as a playable character in just free play. But now he is a full-fledged playable character in story mode, which is really, really cool. It's not really really cool that he doesn't actually show up in cutscenes all that often, but he is here with us just hanging in the wings, and he'll fight for us whenever we need him. So here he is, the final character, Marcopius Marco Neko. He hurls various items at his foes and never forgets to build them later. And I like how he doesn't have anything equipped. You'd think he would have all the best items equipped because he has all of them at his disposal, but no. And of course he has to buy from his own shop, which is kind of funny. Uh, we got some good items over here. We got the Phoenix and Shining Feather, which uh, seem to be pretty good, and I could actually afford both of them? No, I cannot. Oh well. Well, I got one of them, so we're just gonna switch some things around real quick. BRB. Okay, so I was thinking about that when I bought that weapon. It showed that they were stat increases, but it was only because Marco Neko had zero weapons equipped, so as soon as I equipped the better ones, it showed the decrease that the Phoenix would actually give us, so... 
Uh, he conned himself in the long run. I don't know why he did that, but whatever. I'm just gonna blame him for it and call today. Now, Marco Neko, I have the least amount of experience with playing as. I think he had the smallest move set as well because he couldn't. Um, he plays like these guys in like free play mode, but then in the bonus quests only is where he plays Marco Neko and all the other characters. It was kind of weird. So he had a very small move set originally, but I think he got a bit more advanced in this game. So let's see what he's made of. So this is the Forest of Wren. In my homeland, it's called the Forest of Certain Doom. What? Why'd they build a tower in a place like this? People used to live here, but the monsters drove them away. The gods will keep us safe, right? It's possible. Well, let's die as close to the tower as possible. Ooh, this is a nice song to have over uh, battle music for once. Uh, Marco Neko, how do you play? Let's see. He's, I would assume he'd be a fast character and a lot of combos. It seems. Ooh, I like this attack. I really like this attack. It's sort of like Allegra, but like combo y. I like this a lot, actually. Oh, maybe I'll actually use him in battle more than once. I'm actually having fun with a character that isn't playable normally in the 3DS version. Who would have thought? He's very slippery. My god, that's really cool how easy that was. And I killed their ball so they're already gone so he doesn't have a run ability as the other characters don't he can only hop uh this mushroom if you hit it, it'll poison you i'm pretty sure which is why i'm hitting it constantly uh, okay it doesn't really do anything it seems just keep on going we got these bat guys i think they could uh they have a little laser ability that could uh magnetize you towards them so if you're over here the ones in the back actually use their magnet attack and it'll drag you over to them forcing you to lose the ability to walk more or less so make sure you uh, get rid of them quickly even though they seem like a minor nuisance they could be very annoying in big groups of enemies like when you're fighting this big honky jonky they could lure you away to another one uh to a different enemy or they could push you over to this guy like he's doing right now just gonna hit him right now do a little combo I like this guy. I like him a lot, actually. Okay. Uh, I'm sure there's something I'm forgetting to do. Uh, oh, he's just doing like a little dance. Oh, you do that. You do the little whirl around. Okay, okay. So he's very speedy and uh, not really combo-y, but just he could get away with like sweeping right through you and doing a little bit of damage. Okay, so that's kind of interesting. He's also level one though, so that's why he's doing like such low amount of damage. But that'll be sure to get fixed later on. <laughs> He's gonna get fixed. <laughs> this is just so stinking weird. Like, this is what I like to do with Allegro during, like, super tough challenge mode quests when I'm just, like, fighting super huge enemies. And I don't actually want to fight. I just keep hopping on top of them. And he's able to do that as well. So he's got one of my favorite tactics, which is really cool. And they all run away. I don't know if the because they all ran away, I don't get experience off of them. I'm not sure how that works. If that's the case, then I probably should have fought all the minor enemies before taking care of the big one. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but whatever. Just gonna keep going. Uh, just can't uh, worry about all that minor details and whatnot. We'll get to the end of the game regardless. Maybe I'll level up everyone's level 99 regardless. That's actually not the most difficult thing to do because as long as you get to the final boss, you could conceivably just, you have all those more difficult missions unlocked to people, even if they haven't gotten through a uh, story mode themselves. Like if I just went through the entire game with Solange, I could still play every single level with every character, even though I've never used them before. So I could fight the level, the final boss with a level one Ali or Zozo if I wanted to. And sometimes I could actually get away with it. I think I actually did one time beat the final boss with a level 1 Allegro just because I wanted to see if I could. And I got a buttload of singing experience because of it. So it's very easy to get everyone up to level 99. I probably will do so because I would like to just completely own people in online mode. So I'm not entirely sure how online mode works because I don't have any friends. So I've never experienced it. No, but seriously, like, does it make it so... Is it like Pokemon where you can have fixed levels on everyone, or is it actually based on what levels you have on, on your characters in general? Because in the 3DS version, I'm pretty sure you got to customize them because your custom movesets and custom stats that you got to choose uh, were implemented and whatnot. But I think there's an option where you can have either the custom ones or the set levels and stuff. I'm not entirely sure. Whatever. I'm just gonna keep going through here. I just love how fun he is. Like, he's very mindless. This is just very hilarious to use. Gonna keep hopping him around. Do, 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 do. Chopping up some sushi with my little cat buddy. Uh, do, do, do. 
I don't know why zombies are here in the forest, but whatever, I guess. They're just all monsters all of the time, everywhere, lurking around and causing mayhem and mischief. Making mischief is more like it. Now, um, speaking of making mischief, I, not recently, but I got a copy of Mischief Makers where I was looking for one for such a long time, and that's probably the last Nintendo 64 game I'm ever going to get. I sort of want to get Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, because they weren't on Virtual Console, I believe, so... I would need to get them on N64, but there's rumors of an N64 Classic coming out soon. I don't know how they're going to do that, it's just because, like... I feel like an N64 is when you're getting to, like, the high-quality stuff that, like, it would be very expensive. I know the SNES Classic was more expensive than the NES Classic, even though it had less games than it, because the games are just higher quality. So, I feel like if there is an N64 Classic, it's going to, A, not have th that many games on it, uh, and B, it would be very pricey because of the quality of the games. But, I don't know, the N64 is my least favorite Nintendo console. I know a lot of people get mad at me for saying that, but... Um, I'm not sure what it's going to be all about. Of course, Mario 64, the Zeldas are going to be on there. Uh, pretty much any game that has Mario in the title is going to be on it. Probably Mario Kart, Mario Tennis, Mario Golf. But uh, the Pokemon Stadiums, of course, they'll make it on there. Uh, I doubt Mario Party 1 will make it on there because of the copyrights and stuff. Mario Party 2 will most definitely be on there. I don't know if Mario Party 3 will because Super Nintendo Classic only had Donkey Kong Country 1, not 2 and 3. Uh... I don't know what other games would be on there. Con it, would be, it would be singing hilarious if Conker's Bet for it was on there, but no. Nah. Banjo-Kazooie? Maybe? Like, I don't know if N Nintendo would have the rights to that, because, like, Banjo-Kazooie didn't show up on the virtual console at any point, so I don't know if they would uh, have the ability to have Banjo-Kazooie on there, but, of course, if anyone asks, if you ever ask someone what's their favorite N64 game, or, like, a game that they remember fondly, banjo is always one of them. Uh, what else would be there? I have no idea. Hey, you Pikachu would be funny, but no, you'd need the microphone. Superman would be funny, but I know it's not gonna happen. Uh, GoldenEye, of course, it's like a very classic one. Like, I'm naming a lot of N64 games that like, I've never played, but I just know. I'm just trying to speculate what would be on there. Oh, Smash Bros, of course. Yeah, a Smash Bros game on the classic. Like, it just seems like such a big, stinking thing. It's not like a little collection of mini games, because that's sort of what NES games are. They're just kind of mini and stuff. But... Uh, I don't know, the N64 Classic, it seems like it would just be super duper expensive if, if it existed. And the box would probably be really stinking big to hold that giant stinking controller that nobody likes or that everyone pretends to like because Irma Gerd nostalgia! But no, it's not actually fun to play with that thing, it's stinking annoying. Well, this is thinking annoying is the fact that these guys take forever to go down. Like, it may seem like Marco is just a super weak character, but no, it's just the fact that he's level 1. And that's sort of uh, the interesting thing about this game in general is that it's a fighting game with RPG elements, like a hack and slash sort of thing. Uh, I know, like, probably wouldn't be classified as a fighting game, but still, I know people who say Smash Bros. isn't a fighting game, but, like, why does it need to be, like, what needs to happen for it to be classified so that it doesn't break any of the traditional rules of a fighting game? I hear people say, like, with sports games, how they hate them because they, um, all, are all exactly the same and everything like that. But then I mentioned Mario Sports, and they're like, oh, that doesn't count because it's a kiddie game. It has, like, a bunch of fake rules and stuff. Like, you don't like sports games because they're all the same, but then here comes a sports game that's different, and you say it doesn't count. Like, you're not making sense. You're... So, when something different comes around, I'm not objected to calling this a fighting game. I'm not objected to calling it, like, an RPG or hack and slash or whatever because why the heck not? It's got, it has those elements, so just call it that. It's not, like, bad to call it that. It's not bad to not call it that either. It's just like, what the fruit? I was just floating in here all slow, like... And I'm also surprised that Marco has taken, like, no damage the entire time he's been here. It's just really stinking funny to me, so I'm just gonna try and finish this. I just realized this is the equivalent of Big the Cat going, hoo oh, 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 in Sonic Heroes. Uh, hopefully Dobie's watching. Hopefully everyone that I've told to play Code of Princess is watching, aka everyone in the universe. Uh, let's see what we do this. How about, let's do the burst thing, see if we can get some extra damage in. That's getting things done a little more quickly. Uh, and our health goes back up. So yeah, the burst thing, it, it does not drain it uh, all the way normally because now we have burst like uh, amounts. We have two more bursts where we need to do that. That's how that works in this game because in the old days, it was just you had your burst meter and you could turn it on and off as much as you please. As long as you had juice filled in it, you could keep on doing it. But then when you ran out, you were done for. Okay, just keep on slicing and dicing, like making sushi out of mechanical giant cockroaches, or not cockroaches, tarantulas, or spider thingies. Uh, let's see, what does this do? Nothing much. Uh, was that him doing the, the poison thing? Uh, whatever, just keep on going up here. Keep on slicing and dicing. Yeah, this is taking a long stinging time. Who would have thought I would run out of something to I would run out of things to talk about in a Code of Princess episode? I was always super concerned about them taking being too short and everything. Just 
Keep bounce nice and keep bounce nice in. I want to have like the music from uh, when SpongeBob is making his first Krabby Patty, being like, I don't know the worst we saw him living in the sunlight, living in the fun light, having a wonderful time. Uh, because just like it sounds so and weird, but like that's what I would think of because like he just keeps cooking stuff. Like, I don't know, I just assume he's cooking stuff because he's ripping it to shreds. Yeah, that's what cooking's all about. Just having a big old sword for hands and cutting stuff. I don't know. I'm not making any second sense. I just want this tarantula to go down. Good sir. Maybe you could speed it up or something like that, but now nah, where's the fun in that? Alright. Uh, I don't know why, but like when I thought of the speed up song, I immediately thought of the Katamari song. I feel like I might have talked about this, but I might have just thought about talking about it or saving it for a Let's Play video. Like, you know when I'm uh, in one of those segments in a video, like, there have been times where I just sing, I just jump into song, I make up lyrics along the way, and I use this tune too. Like, I always used to do that, but, like, I never really knew what the song was. It's from Katamari Damacy, and, like, I just, that never clicked with me for the longest time. And oh, I forgot there was a time limit in this game. I really forgot there was a time limit in this game. Well, that's unfortunate. Holy Jesus, that bomb is powerful! Oh, I know that would have been a lot easier if I just switched to a different character if I grinded up on a different area, but still, my god. Level up Marco Neko, good stinking job. So his down A gives him a random item that he throws out, and sometimes it can be a crazy powerful bomb. Duly noted. That second go around was thinking nonsense how I thinking died like right when I was about to finish off the fight. Oh, that was annoying. Okay, so we get everybody level up. I kind of wish it just showed up on the same time, but nah. We got a gnome as well. Hooray. We got a vampire bat that we can play as. Hooray. At long last, though, enter the ninja. Ooh, I know what that means, so. Gonna go ahead and start that mission and. How about we go over to good old Alibaba and prepare for awesome music? <laughs> At last I have found you! You will hand over that sword, or I shall hand it over from you myself! That voice. You now face Her Majesty's most fearsome general. Enter! Baku Jupongi from State Right! Why, Ali, my old friend! What a pleasant surprise for you to see me again! What do you mean, old friend? You stabbed me in the back, and now you join the Queen? Come back to us, Boss Ali! It'll be just like old times! We are common thieves no longer! For now, we are the Queen's men! And we have come for that sword. I will not give it to you. It's all right, Solange. He's all talk, but he's never beaten me one on one. Ho ho ho! You have yet to see me at my full strength. I always held back when we spawned. I held back in the name of love. Ew, Ali. Him? Gross. I can't believe I almost let you kiss me earlier. When did she try to kiss you? Look, Baku and I had a thing once, but that was a long time ago, and he was normal then. Ha! Flattery will not work on me. It is clear you are still in love, but I shall not succumb to your wiles. We are through mincing words. Men, to battle! To battle! It's time to face off against the legendary voice, Bakuji Pungi. He is stinking amazing. I love his stinking voice, but he must be put to rest. So, Ali and him are a thing back in the dizzy day. A very weird pairing, I'll say that. But, uh, we're not gonna think about that all too much because I think everyone in the world ships Ali with Solange, so we're not gonna think about the Baku and Ali thing. That's just, that's really stinking weird and gross to me, but whatever. I like Baku Jupongi being just, I ship him with himself because he is just like so in love with himself and he thinks the world of himself and all that jazz, like, I don't even know, like, he's just a weird character, like, look at that stinking hat that he has and everything, I don't know, it's just so stinking awkward. 
Uh, so whatever, now that we got that taken care of, and these are a lot more than just two stinking ninjas. I don't know where they all magically came from, but whatever. I believe Baku is on the other end of the map, instead of, like, fighting a boss, like, eventually later on in the, uh, battle. He's here right now, but all these other enemies are here. If you defeat Baku, then, uh, they will all disappear. But it is very difficult to fight him when you have all these stinking ninjas after you, so I would recommend getting rid of all of them before even heading over to the right, because it would be very difficult to fight all of them. Uh, at the same time. So if we just get through here, I think that box might have some goodies for us, so we're just gonna save it for later. And just get through here. I'm just not good with using Alley, but I want to uh, have every character I use be appropriate for the mission that we're playing, so um, it's very appropriate for Alley to be here in this fight. And since there's no more. Okay, so now he appeared. Maybe they, they changed it up a bit? I don't know. And it's so weird having a character with a full on run button again. Okay, so it's just him. Okay, so they maybe did change it up. How nice of them. Uh, let's see if I can do it. He's got a lot of stinking crazy attacks, as you can see. Uh, he's got all those knives that he can throw in. You can summon them again. Just want to get the lock on. Always want to have that for every fight. Do the burst attack so you can stun him for a little bit. And do a bunch of damage. Throw a bomb. And there you go. Okay, he's already down to like half health already, sort of, kind of. You can never tell what it's supposed to be because like they got the green bar and the red bar. I don't know. It's all confusing stuff. And hello. Go back down here, see if we could lock on to Wings again. Uh, get another burst in there. Attack, 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 attack. Okay, he's got nothing but the red now. Yeah, Force of Red, more Force of Red, because Baka Japonki is seeing red now. Oh, cruel fates, how you mock me. I have been cast down to reap the vile crop. Known as defeat. That's what you get for betraying me. Betray? My heart never betrayed you. All I ever wanted was to amass a small fortune and provide for your every need. You say something? Uh, no, it, uh, it must have been the wind. <laughs> a loquacious zephyr, no doubt. <laughs> but alas... I am beaten. Leave me with my shame. You know something, Baku? That sounds like a great idea. Let's go, people. Move along. Nothing to see here. Boss Alibaba! I'm not your boss anymore. And if you're working for the Queen now, I don't want anything to do with you. Okay. How can you serve the queen? She unleashes monsters and destroys kingdoms. She kills innocents. Slender and nonsense! How dare you spread such taint? The queen's army is the only force that can thwart the monsters. Your accusations are capricious. See for yourself then. Later, we're gonna go save the world. Farewell. My queen is summoning these monsters? We've been made fools of. Boss? We must go forth and unmask this deception. And scene. Oh my god, like even in death and betrayal and realization, he is the ultimate stinking ham and I love him so stinking much. And I like how there was like no amount of proof that we needed to give him or anything like that. It was just like, yo, the queen's summoning the monsters. And he's like, no, I don't believe you. And he's like, okay, see ya. And then he's like, wait, she's summoning the monsters? I can't believe this. It's so stinking weird. I don't understand it, but whatever. Uh, seems he's come to realization of what's going on. So maybe he'll turn around and help us out again. He has a fun, uh, soft spot for Ali, so. Maybe he'll want to do something like that, but now we've unlocked the bandit and the ruffian And we've successfully saved which is always the most important part Uh, I'm at a 50 minute recording. I don't know how much of that is just gonna be sped up Marco Neko boss fight nonsense So I'm just gonna end it off here and see what I got next time on code of princess We are going to the tower This is midnight and beyond uh, now I gotta have like an epic outro because we were just in the presence of the one and only Baku Jupongi this is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later.
Good night and see. And add in a bunch of R rolls for good measure. For good measure.